well together on both sides of the ball this year uh, and have a lot of guys from that team last year that, that know what this experience is like and being able to be back here is a great opportunity to, to just go even further. Season Blue Reviews, good afternoon, Michigan football. I'm Dennis Fifty, and that was Michigan tight end Luke Schoonmaker. <laughs> Out in Tempe, Arizona, as Michigan prepares for Saturday's game against TCU. You know that by now. You've known that for a long time. Seems like we've been talking about Michigan TCU, semifinals, college football playoff, New Year's Eve for a long time. It's because we have. But it's getting closer and closer now. We want to welcome everyone in. Thanks for being here. We talk Michigan football every day, weekdays. If you're listening to this after the fact, you should join us live as we take your feedback. We look at your questions. We take your statements. We get your opinions and we respond to them live weekdays at one o'clock here on the Maze and Blue review. And yeah, everything's pointing to Saturday. I do have to go back for one second and the last couple of days, if not the last couple of weeks, I've been telling everybody like, I just, uh, you know, have fun with this. Just take it day by day, you know, soak it all in. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's just, uh, Saturday will be here before you know it. But now that we're here on this, uh, Wednesday, the 28th, a couple minutes past one o'clock around 75 hours or so to kick off. I'm, I'm not feeling all that patience. I'm I'm ready to go. I'm ready to kick it off. I'm anticipating Saturday. I wish it was here. I wish four o'clock was coming up today where Michigan was playing against TCU. I would take if I could just hit a fast forward button and, you know, here you are. I would push it. I would take myself right to Saturday. I'm ready. I'm ready for the ball game. I'm ready for New Year's Eve. I have everything that I, I need for that day. I, I'm just, it's, let's go. Let's do it. You know, and then if I ever want to go back, you know, I've banked up a couple days, you know, maybe I could hit rewind and, you know, go back for a couple days one time. But right now I want to uh, zip forward. That's just how I feel here on this uh, Wednesday. And, you know, it gets like that during the football season. You know, you have football. This is why football, football is great in a lot of ways, but it's the way that it sets up. You know, you get a football game on Saturday. You know, Sunday when the NFL is going, you know, you're watching it. But then Monday comes and you're like looking back and you're talking with everybody, whether it's at work or talk shows or whatever, a show like this, you know, people are recapping the weekend and talking about the game. And then Tuesday gets there and, you you know, you've heard from the coaches on Monday. So whatever the coaches say and you take it stock and everything else. And then you get to Wednesday. And then, you know, you start peeking ahead, watching what's going to head happen uh, the next week and then Thursday you kind of bite your nails get ready and then Friday you're on the eve of it and then it happens all over again it's just the it's just perfect how football works that way uh, I, I enjoy it you know how you do too that's why we're you are where you are at and I am sitting where I am at because we enjoy football and how it works and we're enjoying ourselves right now I'll speak for everybody we're enjoying ourselves with how last season went, how this season has gone so far. And it's like Luke Schoomaker's talking about last year, you know, they were happy to be there, a little wide-eyed this year. These guys seem uh, very businesslike uh, to a man. You hear him talk, nobody's like, uh, oh, yeah, college football, this is great. Here's how they all, here's how they all sound. We played so well together on both sides of the ball this year uh, and have a lot of guys from that team last year that, that know what this experience is like and – being able to be back here is a great opportunity to, to just go even further. Go even further. Yeah. They're not just looking at Saturday. They're not just, uh, you know, they, a lot of times over the years, you know, the bowl game, you know, Rose Bowl, they all go out to that, whatever the uh, steakhouse, Lowry's, I think it is. You know, I'll go out there and they'll get some backup offensive linemen or eat like 70 ounces of steak or anything. And they're going back. They're not doing any. There's no like, uh, if they are doing any of these fun things or, you know, these other things besides football, we're not hearing about it. It's just like football, focus, playoffs, championship. You know, these guys smell it. These guys taste it. And, you know, I, I like everything I'm hearing from the coaches 
and the players. So, you know, what's – you say what's not to like, you know, casually. Like, there's sometimes there is things not to like. You're like, I don't know like how he's saying that. Or I don't like this approach. I haven't heard any of that. If I had heard something from somebody, my antenna would have gone up saying, oh, no, I don't like that. But I've been listening. I've been watching. I've been talking. And I like the mindset of this 2022 Michigan football team. Today, I am asking you, the people that are watching and listening to this live, think about it and give me an X factor in the fiesta. That's Michigan TCU, Saturday, 4 o'clock. Who do you think is the X factor? Now, I have somebody in mind. And, and, but I could be pushed off of that. So I'm going to wait before I give you my X factor, but I want to hear from you on who you think the X factor for the beige and blue is in the Fiesta coming up on Saturday. There have been a lot of these games going back. This will be the ninth college football playoff where there's four teams. So that means we have had eight years of data to look at. And that's when you get to the semifinals, we've had 16 games to take a look at it and look at the numbers and you know there have not been a lot of uh, upsets meanwhile it has been pretty lopsided the scores i think you know when you just take a look statistically you know how these semifinals have played out hadn't been good for tv ratings but it's been good for the team that wins because they have won in most situations over these 16 games in blowout fashion. So I'll give you the numbers on that. But we'll start with the latest from the Fiesta Bowl and what's going on in Tempe with some of the reporters, uh, the Maze and Blue Review. We know what we're hearing and what people are talking about with this game coming up on Saturday. Now, if you've been paying attention, you know about the one-armed bandit, Donovan Edwards, and how he had that hand uh, pretty much in a cast against Ohio State, and he was still able to go crazy and run for 216 yards against the Buckeyes. And he has had a more streamlined version of a wrap now on his right hand. I saw a video of him running with it. And, you know, it looks, um, you know, close to, you know, he still, it's, it's not just a glove, but it's, I don't know, a quarter of the size that it was against Ohio State. So that's Good news for Donovan Edwards. I mean, if he can run like he did against Ohio State, Michigan is going to win going away. And, you know, it's it's now can he go out and catch a pass? That's what I don't know. I didn't see him catching passes in any of the practices or anything else. And I, I don't know if they'll call a, a transcontinental like they did last year in the Big Ten championship game with him throwing the ball and, you know, throwing it to Roman Wilson. But can he? Carry the ball and take off for 75 yards. Take off and run for 85 yards. Yes. The answer to that is yes. And so it's just good news when it comes down to Donovan Edwards. Is he your X factor? He's not mine. Now, when you get a running quarterback like Max Duggan, the Davey O'Brien winner, and one of the finalists for the Heisman Trophy, Big Red. Sure, he's been called. You know, he's got he's got red hair. Here at Red Hair, they call you, and you're a big guy, they call you Big Red. So, Big Red's pretty good with his arm. And just occurred to me, you know, the only other quarterback that I can really think of in TCU history is uh, besides Davey O'Brien himself, who the award is named after, after he was a horned frog, is Andy Dalton. And he's red haired. So, there you go. Another red haired quarterback there for the horned frogs. But what makes Max Duggan a very good QB is his ability to throw the football and also run. And so Michigan, there's been some talk that Michigan will spy, that they will put a spy on Max Duggan. They're not going to allow him to take off and run freely down the field. Now, when you commit a spy to a specific player, that's going to take away a piece from the passing game. And so, you know, you have to account for that. Oh, there you're playing that. But, you know, Michigan, at least they have that that package in there, that adjustment where if they start out in their 
run lanes and their pass lanes and your, you know, the integrity of rushing upfield and all that. And and Duggan starts getting through that wash and taking off. Uh, Michigan can deploy a spy package uh, and, you know, a, a, a safety, a, somebody like um, RJ Moten could be the spy on Max Duggan, something to look for. Number six from the Wolverines uh, being a spy on the Davey O'Brien Award winner. When it comes down to who's in or who's out, we'll see on Saturday. But a couple a couple guys for sure, this is some good news. Uh, Mike Morris, there was some question on the Michigan Defensive Lineman of the Year, who I see in all those Morris uh, 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 attorney commercials. And I see that he's got his teammates involved. I love him. Uh, I like uh, that that Mike Morris looks like he is going to be full go and ready to go for the maize and blue on Saturday. So, too, is uh, the lineman right next to him down there on the defensive line, number 58, Mozzie Smith. Mozzie Smith was a little banged up, but Mozzie is uh, worked back where he's practicing in full, I'm told. And so 58 is good to go on that defensive line, which is good when they practice one-on-ones if they do that. I mean, you know, defensive tackle against the center, Olu Oluwatimi. He was in, I don't know, walking boot. And you could even see him when they had the Joe Moore Award. He wasn't, you know, he was on there mean mugging for the camera, but he wasn't all dressed for the practice. He's been out for a little bit. But he's down there taking uh, the full amount of reps with the first team, and he's good to go. So Moore, Smith, and Oluwatimi, all good news with those guys. Been as key players for the Wolverines, no doubt. Nobody's going to argue that. Should be good to go for Michigan coming up on Saturday. Meanwhile, uh, during practice, some of the guys standing over there on the sideline not participating, all wide receivers, Andrell Anthony, Amarian Walker, and A.J. Henning. Now let's just take these guys one by one. Uh, Henning this year was not quite, uh, did not have the impact that I don't think anybody was expecting uh, as a wide receiver, uh, he was fine as a punt returner. He had a, he returned one and for a touchdown, and you know he's fantastic in the return game. But let's just say, like you know, so he wasn't practicing. I mean, that's just a fact. We have seen that if you've been paying attention to anybody's reports, you know that Henning did not practice. Uh, is he going to start practicing today? And you know, hope to possibly, but. I would look at this, you know, if uh, at least we can speculate about it, if he was not available, if number three was not available for Michigan coming up on Saturday, Ronnie Bell has uh, been back there on punt returns. And, hey, Ronnie Bell had a big one against uh, who was it? uh, Ohio State had a big return. So I I like – I like the depth there. Like, I like A.J. Henning. It's not like, you know, you're saying, oh, don't worry about it. But Michigan has – a, a nice uh, a nice backup when you talk about a uh, Ronnie Bell and AJ Henning. Amarian Walker came in. I remember in that uh, that Rutgers game, they threw a deep pass to him down the the left side, and he went down and almost was able to catch it. You know the the true freshman out of Louisiana. Uh, he was over there on the sideline, and uh, look, you know Michigan, and and so too Andrew Anthony. So you got a, a freshman and a sophomore. The aforementioned Ronnie Bell, Kojo, Cornelius Johnson, who had the outstanding game against Ohio State, Roman Wilson. There's uh, three wideouts. And then I would say Tyler Morris, the true freshman who had that catch against, uh, who was it, against uh, Illinois or, or Rutgers. He had a, a big catch on a third down. I think it was against Rutgers. No, I think it was against Illinois. Now that I think about it, uh, number 13, big catch. And you're also talking about uh, Darius Clemens, who you know uh, did not redshirt this year. Michigan's really deep after naming all those guys. They're deep at wide receiver. Would they like to have Walker available? Would they like to have Andrew L. Anthony available? Obviously, but they do have depth at the positions of the guys that were at least standing over on the sideline when the cameras were rolling in Tempe over the last couple of days as Michigan has been practicing. So that's what we're talking about when it comes to practice, not the game necessarily yet on Saturday, but speculation about uh, practice. So some good news and some 
news, at least to monitor as we take a look at it. We ask, uh, ask you about our X factors, your X factor for the game coming up on Saturday. Let's read some of the feedback that we're getting here. Travis wants to know about the practice uh, update. We just talked about that. So we got you covered there, Travis. Richard is throwing a stat my way. He says uh, Michigan leads college football with a 27-point differential on wins. So Michigan went undefeated, and that you're telling me that they have a they won by a, a margin of 27 points, which led all of college football. That seems important. That's a nice stat, Richard. I like it. Good to see everybody in here on this uh, Wednesday. Let's see what Jason is saying. We salute him. He says uh, he's ready. Saw some practice clips of us and the Don. Had no cast, he's saying. Those hands may come in handy, pun intended. Yeah, well, I'll go back to the video that I saw from the Don, Dono, the one-armed bandit. He uh, he looked like he had a, a rap, but we could have been watching two different videos. Thinking, uh, Speaking of videos, I saw yesterday that uh, Blake Corum, we talked about Blake Corum yesterday. He threw a three-second video up on his Twitter page, and I liked it. And I'm going to put it up for you right now. Here he is. And let's blow that on up for you. And let's see if we can even make it bigger. And what he is doing is he is walking off the field last year at the Orange Bowl. I had the audio, but you can't really hear what he's saying. But Corum, if you lip read, is looking up into the crowd, and he has the caption underneath. And the caption says, for those listening to the podcast, I promise you, we'll be back. Now, not since Terminator have uh, I, I heard a we'll be back uttered so proficiently by Blake Corum, uttered with such... He was so, so assured of himself that Michigan would be back and the prodigal son has made uh, good on his claim and on his promise that Michigan is back in the college football playoff. Nice job, Blake. As he, I'm watching repeatedly, you know, the three seconds of Corum marching off the field, looking up at his stance. Some of the guys might have been like, Enjoy your stay in the college football playoff and quorum. Looked up. We'll be back. That's what he said. I liked it. Now, here you go. A little bit from Blake Corum. Let's uh, get those X factors from the people and see what they're thinking about. I'll get the ball rolling. Coming up with, uh, with my X factor. Uh, Lyle is speaking to the right hand of Donovan Edwards. He had a soft cast gloved with reinforced thumb. Yeah, that describes what I saw, Lyle. Here's a question from Homeless. How do you feel about our pass defense against TCU? We played some bad pass offenses this year, aside from Ohio State. OSU threw for 350 on us and Purdue for 366. Well, I feel pretty good about the combination of Michigan's pass defense with their ability to get to the quarterback with their pass rush and their ability with their corners and their safeties to be able to uh, defend a passing team. Now, I don't think, like, you know, if you're breaking down this game, which we have done in, in every which way you can, I, I did it yesterday. Here's the, the quick, real version of it, Homeless. Both Michigan and TCU have very good offenses. TCU actually had more points per game scored just by you know a hair. I think they were, they were sixth and Michigan was seventh in scoring offenses this year, over 40 points a game. Now, that's not, you know, you can say, oh, it's Big 12 and opponents. Fine. All of that, you know, could play in. TCU has a very good offense. 
Max Duggan is an outstanding quarterback. He can he stands in there and he stays looking downfield. He's got a hell of an arm and he's not rattled. So he will take a shot downfield and he will take a sledgehammer to the face. That's a great sign for a quarterback keeping his head up when the pass rushes all around him. I saw that by watching a tape of him over the last couple of weeks. And then, you know, he is um, a, a great runner. But the thing is, Michigan, the combination of what they have, I like their personnel uh, in the back end, and I like their personnel be able to get after the quarterback. Now, him uh, getting in front of a pass rush, you know, working through the, the wash and then taking off, I do believe TCU is going to score some points. I don't think that Michigan is looking for a shutout or they're going to hold them down the single digits. I, I think that's an explosive offense and they will be able to move the ball and they will be able to score. What's going to happen in the red zone homeless. If we're looking statistically at TCU as, as good as they were, the number that stands out for TCU this year, they were not very good scoring touchdowns in the red zone. Their touchdown red zone efficiency is not all that good. Meanwhile, Michigan, their red zone defense was pretty good. Let them move the ball between the 20s and not let them, uh, you know, get out there and fight. They're going to make some plays. Quentin um, Johnson's going to be the number one wide receiver taken in the draft next year at 6'4. They're going to throw some up to him and he's going to be able to catch the ball. They've, they've got another, th- and he's not a one man show. They've got at least another three guys, a couple good guys in the slot, another guy that can take the uh, top off of a defense. They'll put four vertical out there. They'll let them, they'll let them fl- uh, fly. And, you know, Duggan's going to put it up to them. There's going to be a lot of that. And Michigan is going to get hit for some explosive plays. But I think uh, in the end, you know, if Michigan can, can come up big in the red zone, if Michigan can limit the explosive plays, of 20 or yards more to, I'll say under five. They can give up four plays even of 20 yards or more. Uh, and I still think that they're going to be in business. You start getting to more than four, uh, look out. So, yeah, I mean, that's TCU. They can score. But what Michigan has and why I like them is that the biggest mismatch in this game is Michigan's running attack against the TCU defense. And Michigan is a physical team. And they practice it, they preach it, and they have displayed it. Michigan has a physicality when it comes down to the way that they play offense. And they can play keep away from that TCU offense. They can sledgehammer you in the face. And they have an athletic offensive line that can get out and and punish you into the first level, second level, and hell, they'll get on your safeties and drive you into the ground. That's the the reason I like Michigan most in this game is that uh, Michigan's running game and the inability of TCU to stop a physical running team from what we have seen this year. That's the biggest key of the game. I like Michigan in all three phases of the game. I like TCU in one phase of the game, and that is their offense. I'll take Michigan in the other two thirds of the game. So that's how I feel about it. There are going to be some plays made in this game uh, against the Michigan defense, but uh, I think that they'll be able to um, persevere. Richard, X Factor, Ronnie Bell. Good one. Is this the slowest week of the year or what? Yeah, I was, it's slowed down. There's a couple bowl games, luckily. That I've looked at, I like, you know, there's there's at least a couple. One tonight, one tomorrow, one Friday. Trying to figure out what I'm going to do, you know, Saturday. I could just start at noon watching the two appetizers. Am I going to watch 10 and a half hours of football on Saturday? Maybe. But I think I got to get busy on Saturday morning. Got to get, got to get doing some stuff. Got to get out. Got to get working. Got to try some stuff. Uh, and then, and then and then come in and and be ready to go at four o'clock. I think, I, you know, getting all the other stuff done early on and then, you know, showing up at 12 o'clock, sitting down and waiting for four o'clock. That's going to be me like uh, in high school, looking up at some of these. I can remember, you know, sitting there and just looking over the clock and that thing just ticking down. What was the, uh, for those of you that are old enough, there was uh 
There was the video of uh, Hot for Teacher. That I think the clock is slow. But wasn't there other a TV show where the guy's waiting? They're waiting for the clock. And then the clock is supposed to get to 12. And instead of getting to 12, it clicks back. And the guy goes, dang it. It's a popular movie. And for some reason, I can't think of it. Who will be the spy on Duggan? Number six, I think. Here's an X Factor. Roman Wilson. With a Roman numero. I like it, Mike. Number zero would be a good spy. Ooh, Agent Zero as a spy. And Sandra still? Sandra still is a uh, a bag of all tricks type guy there on the slot, I think, also. That's a pretty good one, Richard. I like how you're thinking. I could see that. Adam indicating uh, he's going to go on the offensive side. Loveland seems to be getting better every game. Can't deny that. He looks like a star. A combination of Mikey Sanristil and Michael Barrett to spy Duggan. Sometimes Sanristil, sometimes Barrett. Here is Antoine making an appearance on a Wednesday. He says, and I read, I wouldn't worry too much about Max running. People act like you've seen the second coming of Vince Young. Anyway, Michigan plays a lot of zone, and if we do spy him, I would put R.J. Moten on him. Yeah, I, well, I, look, I'm not, uh, you know, I don't think he's Vince Young, but I already compared him to Jalen Hurts. That's what it reminds me of, Antoine. What do you want me to say? He looks, you know, he's built, he's actually bigger than Jalen Hurts, but like J- Jalen Hurts is, Built like a a little kind of shorter version of a defensive end or an outside linebacker. And that's how Duggan is built. And that's how he runs. When he runs, he's. I'm going to say, I don't think that he will slide. He can have 10 yards in front of him. I don't think Max Duggan's sliding. I think Max Duggan is running and he's looking for somebody to lower the shoulder on. Now, maybe that's not too smart. Maybe Michigan, you know, will have a cumulative effect if they can keep hitting him. Bring some of that Big Ten uh, power to him. Jesse's with me. He likes Duggan's uh, running ability. Antoine is dismissing it, you know. Like, nah, he's not having it. A.J. Henning has been kind of a mystery all season, rather missing in action most of the season. Yeah, look, if Michigan had dropped a few games this year, one of the things I would have been looking back on is, uh, hey, why didn't you get Henning more involved in the offense? How about Henning get running back? How about Henning uh, end around? How about some most smoke screens to Henning? And I think um, Henning, sorry. I think Matt Weiss and company. Uh, Weiss Moore, the combination of Sharon Moore and Matt Weiss might say to me, or Jim Harbaugh, hey, you know, we only have so many footballs to go around. You know, you can get. Did you see Roman Wilson early in the season catching all those quick passes? Did you like that? You know, I think that there's probably a point uh, with that. Yeah. And here's the thing. It worked. If it didn't work, it would have been something, but uh, it worked. So I'm just going to give it to him. When it works, what am I going to criticize him for? Is there anything that I can be critical of Michigan for this year? Interesting. Quarterback competition worked out really well. Mm. I like how they brought the the young players along. I like the I like the adjustments at the half. Obviously, hmm. I don't. Do I have even? I gotta at least get one little criticism besides Henning. Hmm. Little, uh, a little sloppy against Indiana in the first half. Same thing with Rutgers getting that punt blocked. I mean, teams are going to make some plays on you. I think that's the one thing to remember on Saturday. You know, just because I, I think Max Duggan is a good player, and I, I think TCU's offense is going to be able to score some points. I'm pretty. I'm going to, you know, a little spoiler. I think Michigan's going to win the game, and I think Michigan's going to win by double figures. But you know, I. That's it. The Don as an X factor. Andre says the edge rushers, if Michigan can pressure Duggan early, 
And often it will be the difference in this game being close or being a runaway Michigan W. Yeah, I like that. I, I think staying in your lanes. You know how many times you see these like um, these savvy quarterbacks now? You'll have pressure on them and you'll have them dead to rights and they like sidestep you and they just, next thing you know, you got four guys blowing past them and, you know, they've worked and they've got all kinds of real estate in front of them. They can still throw and they can run the ball. That feels like a big key to me. Staying in your rush lanes, not let Duggan work through that. Getting him on the ground that way. He's going to make some plays. Not letting him make too many. Troy. This offense should play well against a 3-3-5. X factor will be the uh will be a defensive player. My X factor is a defensive player. Nobody has mentioned him yet. Donovan Edwards is known by his teammates as Dono. Well, like I always say, Richard, you know, I like going with what the, the players on the team call the guy. So if the players are calling Donovan Edwards Dono, I don't think they're calling him the one-armed bandit. One of you guys put that up here after the Ohio State game, and I, I've, I've just been using it every time. But I don't think if I was talking to Donovan Edwards and I was interviewing him, saying, say, let's go to the one-armed bandit. I think, but I could see myself saying, Dono, nice game. X Factor, Money Moody. Michigan will start slower than Omarone. We'll need him to keep it close until we can open that can and get adjust them, uh, get adjusted. Dune E Don. That's our Don. Blake is an awesome person. He teamed up with Larry Prout on a new clothing line. I love Larry Prout. I love the Prout family. They are a uh, they are a true blue Michigan family. I love them. The kid's tough. Jesse says Dono easily surpasses 1,000 yards for the season against TCU. I think. If you told me you thought Dono would run for 200 yards, if Dono could run for 250 yards, that would not shock me. I don't even know if that would surprise me. I think, and maybe we'll get to a hot take Thursday. We'll do it. We'll save it up. We'll take save it up. We got hot takes for tomorrow. But part of my hot takes are going to be 250 for one and 100 for somebody else. A little teaser on my hot takes. He only needs 128. Yeah, I'd bet that. Speaking of betting, they'll probably have a number on that. <sighs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Michigan plays a bend but don't break defense. Yards are not important. We care more about the scores. Let's go ahead and give you a little star for that one, Antoine. Speaking of this game coming up on Saturday, it will be the, what are we talking about, ninth college football playoff where you've had four teams. So we've had eight years and we have 16 semifinals worth of data. I looked through all of those games last night, and I was thinking, what can I pull out of there? And I started, you know, going through all the data, showing my work through the paper. Didn't come out very well. And here's what I came up with. Only three of those 16 games were decided by single digits. If you go back to the 1920 season, Clemson and Ohio State, you remember that. It was controversial at the end. Alave had a chance at the end to catch a touchdown. It was um, it was Clemson winning that game. Remember Okuda had like a, a tomahawk chop and he had a touchdown for uh, – and Clemson won that game 29-23, six points. If you go back to 17-18, the only overtime game, this is in the semifinals. So you did have one in the championship game, but these are just in the semifinals. Georgia beat Oklahoma 54-48 in double overtime. And then the very first college football playoff, Ohio State was an eight and a half point underdog. They beat Alabama outright. 42 to 35. What's that? Seven. 
six, six, and seven. Only three of those games have been decided by single digits. That means all of these other games, well, I'll tell you about them in just one second. All of those other games have been blowouts. Quick reminder, you're looking for still a gift this holiday season. You might be going to now meet all of your cousins or your friends and you're exchanging gifts, white elephants or secret Santas, whatever they call those. And you know that uh, you can come up easily with a gift by giving the gift of the Maize and Blue Review. Go to michigan.rivals.com. You can get that premium access now. I know what's going on with practice. I know what's going on with recruiting. You want to look at all the numbers all the time. It's there for you. So go to michigan.rivals.com and uh, check that out. So you go to the three games that were cited by single digits. The 13 other games have been blowouts with an average margin of victory being 24 and a half points. So to boil this down for you, here's the number that you want to remember. 81% of the college football semifinal games have been blowouts. That's a pretty big number. 81%, only three of them have been single digits. I found that. I remember last year, I think it was watching Cincinnati and, Cincinnati and Alabama. At one point, Chris Fowler said, we don't have any many, very many good games to look back at. Uh, they are mostly lopsided. And, you know, I filed that away. I didn't like that because it was foreshadowing for Michigan, who lost by, what, 18 points last year against Georgia. But they were part of that. Uh, they, they didn't lose by as many as the average, but they lost by a lot. So it was it 34 to 11 last year? 33, 23, 23 points. Is that right? Yeah. 23, not 18. Math. Takes me, it takes me two, three times sometimes when it comes to math. But there it is. Those are the numbers. And I, I thought those were important coming down to it. I'm going to take some more X factors uh, here. Lopsided semis. And we've given you the Fiesta Bowl update. Let's look at some of the more X factors. And then I will tell you mine, Mark, uh, hammering home that red zone TD uh, scoring efficiency from TCU. I'm with you on that. I'm with you. We were, we're, we're coming from the same spot there. Jesse talking about Ben, but don't break. Eddie, Braden McGregor as an X factor. He's been coming on strong. I like it. I've been getting different players mixed up when it comes to Purdue and Ohio State for, for plays. But McGregor, I'm going to say it was against Ohio State at least twice. Like he's burning off the edge, coming in after the quarterback, and then he's pretty good at like tracing the ball and being able to get a pass breakup. And you're right. He has been coming on. We got a score from Mark, 48-23. Lots of TCU field goals. I'll take that right now. I'll take a 48-23 score. Don't do it, Dennis. Knowles. Is that a, a Jim Knowles reference? Call me uh, Dennis Knowles. Blake is great. Let's not forget that Michigan has the best offensive line in the country, the best kicker in the country, the best defensive coordinator in the country. Michigan makes adjustments that matter and translate to plus outcomes. Yeah, I'll say they've got the best coach in the country right now, too. I'll say the best coach out of the final. I'll take I'll take Jim Harbaugh over Kirby Smart. And I'll certainly take him over Sonny Dykes. And I will take him now over Rob Base. I mean, third base. I'll take him over third base. And here's the thing. Previous to November 25th, I still had to give it to third base for what he was able to do in the games, actually, against Jim Harbaugh. I didn't like it. You know, in the offseason, you know, you, you start ranking coaches. And, uh, you know, two years ago, I had Pat Fitzgerald 
ranked as the number one coach in the Big Ten. Well, he hasn't done very well in the last two years. He's fallen out on that list. And I had Ryan Day way up there at the top, and it wasn't any fun. But Jim Harbaugh is I have as the number one coach in the Big Ten. I'll put him behind Nick Saban right now, but who else? Who else am I putting Jim Harbaugh behind? Lincoln Riley? Lincoln Riley? Pretty good offensive coach. I'm ready to, and, and you know, Kirby just won the championship. So I can hear a lot of dog fans going, well, you sound like a real homer. You're right. I do. It is. It's a little bit of a homer call. But I, I you know, I, I think that Michigan is going to win these next two games. So I'm a little bit like Blake Corum. I'm looking to the future. Like Corum said, Michigan's going to be back. The college football playoff as he walk off. I'm telling you that Jim Harbaugh is going to be only guy you can put in front of him is going to be Nick Saban. Because Harbaugh is going to have as many national championships as Kirby Smart, and he's going to beat him head to head. Well, they'll be one and one, but he'll beat him head to head coming up on January the 8th. You want to put Kirby Smart in front of him right now until January the 8th. I'll meet you halfway on that one. But I'm putting Harbaugh at number two right now. Jesse will take Michigan's offenses over TCU. TCU maybe has some better receivers. The Breakfast Club. Let me think of if I can think of it. And for those that might be just joining it, it wasn't the Breakfast Club, but I like the Breakfast Club. It's been a long time since I've seen Breakfast Club. But it was not Breakfast Club. It was a, a kid. It could have been college. Now, they're, now I got it, maybe. I'm going with University of Illinois. Guido the Killer Pimp in, in, in Risky Business. Wasn't um, Tom Cruise in the class, you know, and he's waiting on the clock and everything else. And then it, instead of ticking to 12, it clicks back. I, that's, I think, what I'm going with. I don't know. Maybe. 42 23, another fourth quarter blowout. And finally, one of the most uh, decorated folks here on the uh, Good Afternoon Maze and Blue Review uh, contributors right here is uh, AOKO, who says, Keep that pocket contained, don't sell out for the sack. And you don't need a spy. Let the pressure collapse the pocket and create no lanes for Duggan to run out of. I feel like I'm talking to Jesse Minter. That'd be like something Minter, Minter Clink, the combination of Clink Sale and, and Jesse. You have the package just in case. Probably good to practice it, you know, to have a, have something to go to if they're they're struggling to do what you're talking about. But I think a okay, I think that is the game plan. I don't think you necessarily come out with a spy. You make them adjust to you, not vice versa. And if you have to adjust, then, you know, you adjust. But I think they do what you're talking about doing right there. And sometimes it's easier said than done. But let's see. Michigan has played all year. Not spying a quarterback. No need to start now. Well, they haven't really played any running quarterbacks either. Clifford. Talia. Tonga Vailoa. Those are the two. Oh, Mark, uh, let's see. This is kind of a hot take. Max Duggan will be annoying. He will pick up a few first downs here and there. Once again, make it hard to sustain to, to sustain drives will be the main key. Michigan's time of possession will be paramount. Man, people are ready to go. People have their keys, their X factor, their game plan, and they're executing it already on a Wednesday. Every game I've turned on of TCU, Duggan's a bloody mess. Well, I think that's going to continue on Saturday. The coach says Max can do some tough guy stuff in his little league that doesn't play defense. Try to do it in the Big Ten, and it won't last. Mm, coach, okay. The Beef 909, Michigan by 10. AJ saying if he's the defensive coordinator for Michigan and Max wants to throw 
a shoulder. I'm telling my defenders to knock his head off and be cool with the penalty. Oh, wait a second. Now that sounds tough. You don't want any knocking anybody's head because you get thrown out of the game. Not only can you get thrown out of this game, you can get thrown out of the championship game. You don't want any of that kind of talk, Antoine. Let's 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 uh let's tap the brakes on knocking guys out with headshots. Duggan can run around all he wants. He'll play himself out of the game by halftime. There's another one. AO just talking about physicality and tackling the daylights out of him. All right. Yeah, I'm I'm okay. I'm there. A lot of uh talking about Duggan and running at Luke. Will Corum be on the sideline? Well, I I don't know for I don't know if he's gonna be in Arizona or not. He's not out there with him right now, I don't think. So will he come out and want to be on the sideline with his teammates? Maybe. You know, if I had to guess, I'm going to go ahead and give myself uh, a yes on that. I'm expecting to see Blake on the sideline. I, don't, I haven't heard that. That's not me. That's sourced. That's a, that's a guess. You would you want to be on the sideline if you're Blake Corum? You know, it, if it was, if his knee was messed up, and you know, it might do him better sitting on the couch having it elevated. But you know, he he could potentially on the. Uh, you know, the eighth or ninth, be ready to go for the championship. So, you know, he should be good to stand on the sideline. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he he will keep him pumped. There you go. Andre's talking about Kirby Smart. He's a recruiter. Somebody that says, go Lions, Western Michigan alum. Not Broncos for Western Michigan alumni. Go Detroit Lions. I'm in. I'm in on some go Lions now. They really disappointed me last week down there in Carolina. But I think that they'll win Saturday, and it would be nice to see them. How many times I've watched the Lions and and Packers play with a potential playoff spot on the line, and they still need some things to happen there, and then the Lions – not show up at all. Man. Remember the one year they had to beat the pack and the, and the backup quarterback threw for like 500 yards on him? Remember that one? Remember uh, I remember Stafford where he was so keyed up and they had, who's that uh, wide receiver? Golden Tate from Notre Dame. A little 10 yards. This is in the first half. A little 10 yard, little uh, little curl route. Stafford goes back, throws, flips it 10 feet over his head. And he played a good second half. What happened at MSU? Not really sure what we're talking about. MSU. Uh, I think we've got to the point here where uh, the ACC is better. People are arguing about the conferences. Good to see a count 22. They needed overtime to beat Oklahoma State. Yeah, look, Michigan now. Uh, Michigan should win this game. Michigan is a seven and a half point favorite. History suggests that, you know, in the semifinals, the, the favorite wins the game almost every time. The way Michigan has played this year. Like I said yesterday, I think it'll be a close game at the half, and I think Michigan will, will win going away in the second half. Michigan has a complete team. Yeah, they could run it and expose uh, TCU that way, and that's the biggest advantage that they have. TCU can't stop the run. They're physically, they're not going to be able to hold up. But Michigan, as we saw against Ohio State, they can make some plays passing. And, oh, yeah, J.J., can, how do you want it? How do you want it? Well, J.J.'s a hell of a player. You know how many times in the years past we'd sit around saying, you know, what's Michigan need? You know, they need to recruit. And we'd always come back to it and say, Michigan needs a quarterback. Michigan needs a dynamic quarterback. Michigan's got it. Michigan's got a dynamic quarterback. They got the uh, Sharon Joe Moore offensive line in front of them. Donovan Edwards. Who's better than Donovan Edwards? Who? Talking about in all of college football. Who is better than Donovan Edwards? 
Maybe the guy that's going to be on the Michigan sideline, Blake Corum. Who else? Bijan. I'll take Blake. I'll take. Uh, I'll take the Don. And you know, Michigan's wide receivers on any given day. You know, when you talk about those X factors, I liked it because you know, I don't have to give mine. Somebody mentioned Roman Wilson. I'll buy that. I really like Roman Wilson. I think he could be an X factor in this game. Somebody mentioned Kojo. Enough said. We watched the first half of the Ohio State game. The pretty big X factor, Cordelius Johnson. And uh, didn't somebody also say Ronnie Bell? This is Richard. X factor. Three wideouts, three X factors. I buy all of those. But my X factor. I went to the defensive side of the ball. And I went with a player who, he hasn't been their best player on defense all year long. The best player on defense all year long, I'll give it to Mike Morris. But a guy who was the best player on defense in the Big Ten Championship game, where's the number two for Michigan? And right now, I think he's their best player. And it just so happens that TCU and their offense, they're going to want to throw the ball up to big Quinton Johnson at 6'4". Michigan has that kryptonite. They have. I can't wait to see it. The matchup of my X factor for the game, Will Johnson against the TCU wideouts. All right. That's going to do it. I think I have to cough, so I'm going to say goodbye and talk to you tomorrow at 1. See you then.